Good day. Again, this is Francis Caliban and welcome to another video on lessons in financial accounting and reporting. Our topic for today is accounting for non-current assets held for sale and our discussion will be based on the provisions of IFRS 5, non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. This standard was issued in March 2004 to supersede IAS 35 discontinuing operations. Although the standard provides the guide for the accounting for assets held for sale and the presentation and disclosure of discontinued operations, we will only discuss the provisions relating to non-current assets held for sale. We shall have a separate discussion for discontinued operation. So before we begin, let us have these learning outcomes first. After this session, you should be able to, number one, identify and apply the criteria for assets to be classified as held for sale. So this learning outcome answers the question when to classify a non-current asset or assets of disposal group as held for sale because sometimes an entity disposes of a group of assets. So this is not just for a specific uh, non-current asset but also for a group of assets or what we call disposal group. Number two, Formulate journal entries relating to non-current assets held for sale. So we shall prepare journal entries relating to the initial classification as held for sale up to the, the recognition or the eventual sale of the asset. Also, we shall formulate entries relating to the reclassification as held for use, meaning from uh, being classified as held for sale and back to asset held for use if the previously classified uh, held for sale asset no longer meets the criteria as held for sale. And finally, number three, apply the accounting principles for presentation and disclosures in the financial statements of non-current assets held for sale. This particular learning outcome is about how an asset or assets of disposal group be presented in the financial statements if by year end the assets are still unsold or not yet disposed of. Okay, so let us now discuss the requirements of IFRS 5 for assets that meet the criteria to be classified as held for sale. Um, the objective of IFRS 5 relating to asset held for sale is to specify the accounting for assets held for sale. In particular, IFRS 5 requires that assets that meet the criteria to be classified as held for sale shall be measured at the lower of carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. Um, as we recall, carrying amount is the cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses. Whereas fair value, if we refer to uh, the definition in IFRS 13, um, fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Whereas cost to sell is the incremental cost directly attributable to the disposal of an asset or disposal group excluding finance cost and income tax expense. Meaning, whichever is lower between the carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell will be the initial measurement of the non-current asset held for sale. Number two, depreciation on such assets to cease. So from the moment the asset was classified as held for sale, no more depreciation charges. And finally, number three, to be presented separately in the statement of financial position, meaning the asset held for sale shall not be aggregated in the same line item as it was included or aggregated before. Say for example, land. Land which is held for use in the, um, in the business or in the company. Um, land is an item of PPE and therefore reported in the statement of financial position under the line item PPE. But when the land when that particular land is classified as held for sale and the criteria for the change in classification uh, were met, the land shall be excluded from the PPE line item and shall be reported separately as current asset under the line item, assets held for sale. 
Okay? So now, let us discuss um, the scope of IFRS 5. Um, this is very much important for us to know what are the assets that are being scoped out from the measurement provisions of IFRS 5. So IFRS 5 does not apply to the following assets which are covered by separate IFRS, either as individual asset or as part of uh, disposal group. So number one is deferred tax asset simply because deferred tax asset um, cannot be sold. Assets arising from employee benefits or what we call plan assets. Um, plan assets are a specific um, to, to pay or to fund employee benefits only. So they are only available to pay or fund employee benefits. So they are also not for um, sale. Financial assets within the scope of IFRS 9 or those um, investment in equity or debt securities which are classified as either fair value through profit or loss or fair value through other comprehensive income. Non-current assets that are accounted for in accordance with fair value model in IAS 40 investment property. Um, actually, this is um, tackled in our separate discussion for investment property. No? If an asset or if an investment property is accounted for using the fair value model, use IAS 40. But in the event that the fair value of the investment property is not determinable, then the entity may choose to account for the investment property using the cost model. And in such case, um, the entity may choose IAS 16, PPE, IFRS 16, leases, or IFRS 5, um, non-current asset held for sale. Also, for assets uh, valued using the fair value less cost to sell model uh, under IAS 41, agriculture, and um, insurance contracts, IFRS 17. Next, when do we classify a non-current asset as held for sale? So this is the first learning outcome. Uh, before we answer this question, let us recall first the definition of a non-current asset. So for assets classified according to liquidity presentation, which is the most common way to present um, assets in the statement of financial position. Non-current assets are assets that include amounts expected to be recovered more than 12 months after the reporting period. So non-current assets, amounts expected to be recovered more than 12 months after the reporting period. Now, to answer the question, if the carrying amount of the non-current asset or disposal group is recovered or recoverable through sale rather than through continuing use, then sound mind would dictate that the non-current asset or disposal group shall be classified as held for sale. And once they are classified as held for sale, their classification changes from being non-current asset to current asset. But take note, ha? assets classified as non-current shall not be reclassified as current until they meet the criteria to be classified as held for sale. So we are to satisfy certain criteria. Even if the non-current assets are acquired exclusively with a view to resale, we purchase the asset with the intention of selling it immediately after the acquisition. It shall not be classified as current unless they, um, they meet the criteria to be classified as held for sale in accordance with the FRS 5. So our next question now is, what are the criteria to be satisfied for a non-current asset or disposal group to be classified as held for sale? Okay, so we have two criteria to be classified for a non-current asset to be classified as held for sale. Number one, the asset or disposal group must be available for immediate sale in its present condition, subject only to the terms that are one, usual, two, customary. So those are the keywords for sales of such assets or disposal groups. Number two, the sale must be highly probable. Now, when can we say that the sale is highly probable? Just remember CAR 1. Okay? For the sale to be highly probable, the appropriate level of management must be committed to a plan to sell the asset. So first is management's commitment. An active program to locate a buyer must have been initiated. So that's number two, active program. Number three, 
the asset or disposal group must be actively marketed for a sale at a price that is reasonable. So the price must be reasonable. And finally, the sale should be expected to qualify as completed sale within one year from the date of classification. So again, the criteria for a sale to be considered as highly probable, management's commitment, active program, reasonable price, and completed sale within one year from the date of classification. Now, um, IFRS 5 also emphasizes that um, exchange of non-current asset for another non-current asset with commercial substance is also considered as sale. So, hindi lang yung may buyer and may seller yung sale, no? According to IFRS 5, sale transactions include exchanges of non-current assets for other non-current assets when the exchange has commercial substance. Kaya nga, if we are to go back to the provisions of IA 16, Property, Plant, and Equipment, if the transaction or if the exchange has commercial substance, IA 16 allows the recognition of gain. When, uh, which is, in fact, it's gain on sale because exchange with commercial substance in substance is considered as sale. Okay? Okay. How about those non-current assets acquired exclusively with a view to its subsequent disposal? So, when an entity acquires a non-current asset or disposal group exclusively with a view to its subsequent disposal, it shall classify the non-current asset or disposal group as held for sale at the date of acquisition only if there are two criteria. Number one, the one-year requirement is met and it is highly probable that any other criteria, meaning the first three criteria, management's commitment, active program, and reasonable price, at that date will be met within a short period following the acquisition and the standard um, provided a uh, an example of short period of time, three months. Okay, so number one, the one-year requirement is met and the three other criteria were met or are met within three months. Next, what if the criteria are met after the reporting period. So this is with reference to IAS 10 events after reporting period. According to IA, IFRS 5, if the criteria are met after the reporting period, an entity shall not classify an uncurrent asset or disposal group as held for sale in those financial statements when issued. However, when those criteria are met after the reporting period but before the authorization of the FS, the entity shall disclose the information in the notes, meaning the meeting of the criteria after the end of the reporting period is not an adjusting event. So, they are non-adjusting events. So, the entity, the most that the entity can do is just to disclose the facts in the notes. Okay, so how about those non-current assets that are to be abandoned? So, non-current assets or disposal groups to be abandoned include non-current assets or disposal groups that are to be used to the end of their economic life and non-current assets or disposal groups that are to be closed rather than sold. According to IFRS 5, an entity shall not classify as held for sale a non-current asset or disposal group that is to be abandoned. Why? Because its carrying amount will be recovered principally through continuing use rather than through sale. Okay? But if the disposal group to be abandoned meets the criteria to be held for sale, then the entity shall present the results and the cash flows to the disposal group as discontinued operation as uh, the date at the date on which it ceases to be used. Okay, next. Okay, so let us now proceed with the measurement of non-current assets held for sale. So according to IFRS 5, an entity shall measure a non-current asset or disposal group 
classified as sell for sale at the lower of its carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. Actually, this was mentioned already when we discussed the objectives of IFRS 5 pertaining to non-current assets held for sale. So again, it's the lower between the carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. So do not uh, forget huh, to deduct always cost to sell from the fair value. Next, an entity shall recognize an impairment loss for any initial or subsequent write-down of the asset or disposal group to fair value less cost to sell. So in the event that the fair value less cost to sell is lower than the carrying amount, then the entity shall recognize an impairment loss. Or after the initial measurement, subsequently the fair value less cost to sell decreased, the entity may again recognize an impairment loss on the other hand an entity may also recognize a gain for any subsequent increase in fair value less cost to sell so say for example um, after uh, reclassifying the asset as sell for sale the fair value less cost to sell increased okay so the entity is allowed to recognize a gain as long as it is not um, it will not be in excess of the cumulative impairment loss that has been recognized previously. So meaning we have a limit as to the recognition of the gain or the recovery of impairment loss. Okay, so that is about non-current asset held for sale from initial recognition up to measurement. Let us um, now try to answer some illustrations um, and apply what we've learned um, in relation to non-current assets sell for sale as guided by IFRS 5. So, for example, on July 1, 2019, Dito Company decided to dispose of its building located in Davao City, which met the criteria for classification as held for sale. The building was carried at a cost of 100 million with accumulated depreciation of 40 million at December 31, 2018, based on a 12.5 years on a straight line basis. So depreciation is straight line. Dito company estimated it could sell the building at its fair value of 50 million with estimated selling cost of 4 million. So by July 1, we shall compare the carrying amount and the fair value less cost to sell. Whichever is lower will be our initial measurement of the building held for sale. On December 31, 2019, the building had not been sold but market conditions indicated that there had been an increase in the fair value to 54 million. So according to the previous slide, an entity may, an entity may uh, recognize or shall recognize either impairment loss or uh, recovery of impairment loss depending upon the movement of the fair value less cost to sell. Um, but as you can notice on December 31, 2019, only the fair value is mentioned. Cost to sell is not mentioned. What shall we do here is we um, use the fair value less cost to sell uh, of 4 million mentioned on July 1, 2019. Same lang yan. On March 1, 2020, Dito com uh, Company was able to sell the building for 55 million and pay disposal cost of 4.4 million. So the, the illustration is from the initial recognition as non-current asset held for sale up to the eventual sale of the asset okay so <clears throat> what are the entries to be um, prepared in relation to these um, transactions number one on July 1 2019 um, as you can notice the depreciation or the accumulated depreciation presented in the problem is only up to December 31 2018 but the criteria um, to be classified as sell for, for sale were met only in or on July 1, 2019. Therefore, we are to provide the depreciation from January 1, 2019 to July 1, 2019, half year. So how much is that? So our annual depreciation is 100 million divided by 12.5 years. It's 8 million per year. So July 1, January 1 to July 1 is half year, so 4 million. So debit, depreciation expense of 4 million and credit accumulated depreciation of 4 million. 
So, how much now is the carrying value of our building? So, 100 million minus accumulated of 40 plus 4, 44 million, the carrying value is 56 million. So, what shall we do now? On July 1, 2019, we shall uh, de recognize the cost of the building, which is 100 million, so credit building of 100 million, and debit the accumulated depreciation of 44 million. That particular um, entry. Um, is for the derecognition of the building as PPE. So, credit building 100 and debit accumulated 44. So, now the building as PPE um, is now derecognized. Now, in exchange of the derecognition, we shall record building held for sale. So, debit building held for sale at what amount? According to IFRS 5, it's the lower between the carrying amount, which is 56 million, and fair value less cost to sell, which is on July 1, 2019, the fair value less cost to sell is 50 minus 4. It's 56. So 100 minus 44 is 56 versus 50 minus 4 or uh, sorry 46 50 minus 4 is 46 so 56 versus 46 lower is 46 so we shall use the fair value less cost to sell of 46 so building held for sale is debited for 46 million now the carrying amount is 56 the building held for sale is 46 therefore at initial recognition there is an impairment loss of 10 million. Yan yung sinasabi kanina sa measurement provision na the entity shall recognize an impairment loss for the initial decrease in fair value less cost to sell. Okay? So after that um, entry, the building as PPE is now the recognized including the accumulated depreciation and a new asset which is building held for sale is recognized in the books. Next, on December 31, 2019, the building had not been sold. The market conditions indicated that there had been an increase in the fair value to 54 million. As I've mentioned, we shall use the 4 million cost to sell given on July 1, 2019. So, in effect, our fair value less cost to sell on December 31, 2019 is 50 million. As against our fair value less cost to sell on July 1, 2019, which is only 46 million so there is an increase of 4 million so according to IFRS 5 again measurement an entity shall recognize um, recovery or um, um, reversal of impairment loss for any subsequent increase in fair value less cost to sell so what is our entry debit building held for sale for 4 million and credit impairment loss or Recovery of impairment loss for 4 million. Lastly, on March 1, 2020, the company was able to sell the building for 55 million and pay disposal costs of 4.4 million. So 55 minus 4.4 is 50.6 million. So we shall debit on March 1, 2020, a cash of 50.6 million. And what is the credit? Of course, the building held for sale. And what is the carrying value of our building held for sale? Initially, on July 1, it's how much? 46 million. And on December 31, recovery of 4 million. So, the carrying value of our building held for sale as of March 1, 2020 is 50 million. So, credit building held for sale for 50 million. And therefore, we are to recognize a gain of 600,000. Okay? So, that's it for the sale of non-current asset held for sale from initial recognition up to the sale. Final topic, reclassification as held for use. So, what will happen if the previously classified asset held for sale is reclassified as asset held for use. 
So the entity shall measure a non-current asset or disposal group that ceases to be classified as sell for sale or ceases to be included in a disposal group classified as sell for sale at the lower of. So merong comparison again. Number one, it's adjusted carrying amount. When we say adjusted carrying amount, it's the carrying amount before the asset or disposal group was classified as sell for sale, adjusted for any depreciation, amortization, or revalu revaluations that would have been recognized had the asset or disposal group not been classified as sell for sale. Meaning, if the asset which was classified as sell for sale was not classified as sell for sale, how much supposed to be or supposedly is the carrying amount now? That is the adjusted carrying amount. And it shall be compared against its recoverable amount. And if we are to go back again to IAS 16 PPE, what is recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is the higher between fair value, less cost to sell, and value in use. In layman's term, an asset may be recovered through either using it, that's why we consider value in use, or selling it, meaning fair value, less cost to sell. And whichever is higher, that's the recoverable amount. Diba kung saan yung mas malaki, yun yung gagawin mo. If mapapakinabangan mo siya by using it, then use value in use. If... <clears throat> You can um, recover it through selling it, then use fair value, less cost to sell. So, recoverable amount is the higher between fair value, less cost to sell, and value in use. So, again, if the um, entity, say for example, if the entity decided um, not to sell the asset but to use it, continue using it after um, classifying it previously as held for sale, the entity now decided to use it again. So reclassification as held for use. What is our um, measurement? Lower between adjusted carrying amount and recoverable amount. Okay, so let's use um, the previous example. Okay, so let us try to um, apply the provisions of IFRS 5 pertaining to reclassification as held for use uh, through this illustration. Actually, I've used the um, information pertaining to Dito Company um, for July 1 and uh, December 31. I've just changed the uh, last paragraph. So here's the twist. On July 1, 2020, the asset had not been sold and Dito Company decided to use instead the asset in its operation. At that date, the building's value in use was 43 million while its fair value less cost to sell was 41.5 million. So, going back to the um, provision of IFRS 5, on the day the asset um, which is classified formerly as held for sale, um, reclassified as held for use, okay? So, the measurement will be the lower between the adjusted carrying amount and the higher between fair value less cost to sell and value in use or the recoverable amount. So the first thing that we shall do here is as of July 1, 2020, let us compute the adjusted carrying amount. So again, cost natin is 100 million less accumulated depreciation as of July 1, 2020. How much? Again, as of December 31, 2018, it's 40 million and 8 million per year. 100 divided by 12.5 is 8 million. How many years have passed from December 31, 2018 to July 1, 2020? It's 1 1.5 years. So 8 times 1 1.5 years is 12. So additional um, 12 million accumulated depreciation since December 31, 2018. So it's 52. So again, cost of 100 million, less accumulated of 52. Our adjusted carrying value as of July 1, 2020 is 48 million. As against recoverable amount, which is how much? 43 and 41.5, higher is 43, value in use, so we shall use 43. So lower between 
adjusted carrying amount of 48 and value in use of 43, we shall use 43. Okay? So, our first entry is to recognize the building held for sale account. So, credit building held for sale for its carrying amount of 50 million. That's the value as of December 31, 2019, right? 50, 54 fair value less 4 uh, cost to sell. After the recognizing the building held for sale, let us now recognize, re-recognize, recognize again the building account. So original cost is 100 million. And again, the measurement must be how much? 43 million. And for us to have a 43 million building account, we shall credit the accumulated depreciation by how much? By 57 million. So net 157 is 43. So again, pag ninet natin yung entry na yan, the building account is 43, whereas the building held for sale account is 50. So what's the difference? The 7 million, it's called impairment loss. So another impairment loss for 7 million. Okay? So that's it. Thank you. And I hope you've learned something. That is the accounting for non-current assets held for sale.